One of the more underrated ideals for the ABR part three exam is the fact that you may know a lot of didactic knowledge. However, it's possibly most important, you know what you do in your practice and are able to confidently verbally describe that. So let's begin by describing your HDRQA. What would you do if a source was stuck in a patient in what is considered a medical event? So again, it is critical that you know what you do and, and better yet that you can confidently say what you do and you don't hesitate and you just verbalize that in a very confident manner as if you truly have been doing it for years and you designed the program yourself. So here for our daily, so you want to check the console date and time. You want your emergency equipment to be present and easily readable. You also want to verify your emergency off, your console interrupt. You want to check that your prime alerts work when the source is out, they are red. And if you have your, if, if they're on an audible signal to be sure that they can make noise as well. Also verify that your door light works, that the source position each and every day is within tolerance. You want to verify your activity of your source, that your source retracts when you do a lot of the emergency procedures, open the door, things of that nature, and then any other procedures you do for your daily QA. And so next we've got our monthly or quarterly QA here. So first thing, you should ideally do TPS QA on your HDR unit as well in your software. So this includes doing importing and verifying of CT numbers and the geometric accuracy of your TPS. So that's monthly. And then if we want to talk about quarterly, let's talk about, of course, the source exchange that's done. And that's the exchange activity you want to verify. Your applicator checks, you want to verify that there are no damage to those. Surveys, you want to do a auto radiograph. You want to test linearity. You want to do all of your daily QA. So this is daily QA and then tests on top of that. You want to do a power check to verify if you lost power that the source wouldn't be stuck in the patient that's able to retract or ideally finish the treatment as is. And then I'll, as I've mentioned in a lot of these videos, you want to cite any type of task groups that are ideal and relevant. So TG56 is the code of practice for brachytherapy. And then TG59 specifically is HDR treatment delivery. So mention those. So what will you do if a source was stuck in a patient? So first thing, you want to look for any errors on the console. You want to go into the room with the GM meter. So this is going to help you determine is there a the source is out. You, of course, have your prime alerts and things of that nature, but you also need your stopwatch. Remember that because of the high dead times, you're not necessarily going to get a necessarily accurate dose rate or exposure rate from the GM meter, but it will tell you if the source is still out and give you some type of instantaneous uh, exposure rate. So then at that point, you want to hit any type and every type of emergency interlock, see if those work. If that does not, then you want to do a manual retraction of the source. Then you want to use the Geiger meter to ensure that the source is retracted. And then if that isn't gone, if you still have activity and exposure, then you want to remove the applicator. And so, Beforehand, you should talk with your clinic about this. Is a nurse going to remove the applicator? Is the physician going to remove the applicator? And then once that is done, you want to survey the patient and the equipment, and then you want to remove the patient from the room. Again, you want to survey 
because you want to verify the source is no longer in the patient. It should be either in, ideally, in the HDR unit. Now, you also, you need to notify the NRC verbally no later than the next day. And you also need to call the manufacturer of the afterloader. And then with the NRC, there's going to be some paperwork and documentation of what happened, what were the estimated exposure levels, things of that nature. You also need to notify the patient, the physician, and all staff as well, of course. So now what is considered a medical event? So two ways that you can determine this. So first of all, the total dose, if that differs by 20% or more, that is a medical event. Or if you have a single fraction and that dose differs by 50% or more, that is also a medical event. A wrong isotope, a wrong patient, or a wrong site is also considered a medical event. So these three things are critical, and not only being a good clinical physicist, but being able to answer in your part three. So study them, know how to answer them, feel comfortable answering, answering them, and very confident. If you have any questions, comment below. I'd love to help. Best of luck studying, and you can do it.